Amen. Welcome to Unshackled Ministries here in the wonderful, beautiful city of Paramount, California. Amen. For the call of God on our ministry and our church is to set the captives free. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you're out there, out there somewhere, and you're in bondage to some kind of life-controlling substance or whatever it may be, many are in prisons without walls these days. So I'm telling you with a great... Um, um, heart of confidence that the Lord Jesus Christ is here with the keys to set you free and to open those chains in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I'm glad to have you folks here with us today. Let's open up in a wonderful prayer. Amen? Amen. God, we thank you today. God, we love you today. God, we appreciate you today. God, we know that you have done all things and you work all things out good for your pleasure, Lord God. We thank you that we have been created for your pleasure, Lord God. We praise you and thank you today for your love. We ask you to take control and charge, Father God, through your mighty word and the power of the Holy Spirit here this day, that many, many lives would be touched, that many lives, Father God, that many lives would be set free today, Father God, that the power, the power of the resurrection would show itself mightily here today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we love you, appreciate you, and give you all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a praise for our <laughs> Well, it's good to have you folks here today. Amen. God has a good word for all of us today. Praise the Lord. Today is also Communion Sunday, so I pray that uh, you will even now begin to examine your hearts. And if there's anything, any unforgiveness, any other things that have been bothering you over the last weeks or since last month, um, it's time to like uh, open up and say, Lord God, I no longer will be in bondage to unforgiveness. That's one of the key things the enemy uses to bring discouragement in our lives. But if you will let the Lord set you free, amen. Um, he's willing to do that. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So we're going to celebrate communion in a, in a bit and pray for God's mighty power to, to touch our lives. Amen? Amen. Um, don't forget that on Tuesdays we have um, here at the church uh, Tuesday night prayer. God is doing miraculous and mighty things here at prayer. Amen? 
Also, if you want to join us, you can join us. Um, uh, we'll be doing it here, but you can join us through Zoom. All of your prayers will be ex you know, accepted and heard, and we will join in agreement with you for the needs in your life that, that you're asking God to help you with. So those are on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. Zoom starts at 7.15, and uh, it's a really, really awesome way that God has helped us to do that. Amen? And if you're struggling... And uh, you're not coming to prayer, you know, that's kind of like maybe God's trying to get your attention to get to Tuesday night prayer. Amen? Hallelujah. And then on Wednesday nights, we have live Bible study here. By live, I mean the church doors are open. People are here. Bibles are open. And uh, we study the Word of God, and He gives us a very encouraging environment to uh, receive from Him in, on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, today's the start of a brand new month. Amen. 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 So Amen. praise God. God has got us to the middle of the month. Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, we got a wonderful things planned for this month. God is going to do great things. So let's just uh, keep our hearts focused and uh, and uh, stay stay connected. Amen. Somehow, some way, stay connected. Amen. Hallelujah. God has a wonderful word for each and every one of us today. And uh, I've entitled it, The Day My Whole Life Changed. Amen? And that's a powerful, uh, a powerful uh, word. The day that my life changed. Amen? Uh, but today we're going to be talking about somebody in the Bible that the day that his life was touched by God. He changed. And the gentleman's name is uh, Bartimaeus. And they started calling Bartimaeus blind Bartimaeus because you see Bartimaeus was blind hello but because he was blind you know they say that when you're blind your other senses become more stronger and one of the things that became stronger for Bartimaeus was his hearing because somehow he heard about Jesus Amen. are you here with me Amen. so today you know and when I think back over my life and and uh, the day that my life changed, you know, um, the process began of change and transformation. It was a great day where the situation and circumstances that I was in, a favorable type days, no. They were very ugly scenes. But in those ugly scenes, in that fire that I was in, the day that I gave my life to the Lord, there was peace from God. So I knew that he stepped in. Like the song that we were just singing, you know, um, by his touch, you know, Amen. his touch, he holds us up. Amen? Amen? So my whole life changed that day, and I knew that my destiny had changed. I knew that God had a different purpose uh, for my life, and I knew that things were going to get better. Did it happen? To, um, the, the miraculous thing happened on the inside, but the things on the outside continued to be the same. But there was something different. I was different yeah. on the inside. Not by my own strength, my own wisdom, my own smart, but by letting the Lord take over and, and surrendering yeah. to his power and his love. Amen? Yeah. So, you know, when I entitled this, the, the day my whole life changed, you know, it's about Bartimaeus, but it's also about each and every one of us. Because the day that you allow God to take over, you'll see a great change. Yeah. I remember right. when Brother Alvin uh, first joined us in Unshackled Ministries over there in Compton and Linwood. Um, one of his uh, one of his ways, he said, his testimony was, "Man, God did a was it radical or a rude awakening? A rude awakening." <clears throat> and uh, he would he would, that was his powerful testimony, and I learned from that because that's kind of like what happened. It was a rude awakening, you know, when God came into my life, but it turned into joy. Are you here with me? Amen. So today we're going to be looking at the Bible. We're going to be reading from the Gospel of Mark. We'll be reading from Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Amen? So with your gizmos, your devices, or, your, or maybe up there, Caesar will put it up there. Um, you'll be able to read along with us the story. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
In Mark chapter 6, 10, verse 46, it says this. It says, Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. Now, Jesus was already leaving the city. He was on his way out. Where was he at? Where was he going to? Church, in this scripture here, Jesus was on his way already to Jerusalem, to the cross. Amen? Amen. What's powerful about it is that, as we'll see as we continue to read, is that even though he was on a mission, he was on a course, he had time to stop and to touch somebody. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd, with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man. Cheer up. On your feet. He's calling you. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And I want to stop there for a quick second in the reading because I want you to start thinking about that question. Because that question is being offered to you today. Jesus is asking you, what do you want him to do for you? Amen? Yes. Is there a need in your life? Is there a place where you're at that you need some special touch? Maybe you've been going through some things this year. Maybe you've been going through some struggles that have accumulated over the years and the years, even as you have been walking with the Lord. So the question is, as he, as he phrased it to Bartimaeus, amen, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus is asking you today. And there's somewheres in your life, there's some place in there where there's that need that you've been holding on to, but you're asking God, you want God to do something. Maybe it's to fix a situation, a circumstance, or maybe like I said in the beginning, maybe we're still imprisoned by something from the old life, like unforgiveness, or bitterness, or resentment, that can end up being a hidden anger within us. Are you hearing me? So I want you to think about that as we're going through this, through this message today. What Jesus is asking you is what do you want him to do for you? Because God is willing. There was once a story in the Bible where a man was really sick. His son was sick, I'm sorry. But he came to Jesus and he said, if you are willing, you can heal my son. You can make him better. And Jesus kind of came back with an answer like this. If I'm willing, he's always willing. Amen. But sometimes we're too busy trying to fix things in our own strength or our own power or our own smarts. We have to let go and we have to surrender all and say, God, I need you to help me. Amen? Amen. When I say my whole life changed, Bartimaeus' life changed this day. My whole life changes when I was when I was in a place, very bad place, in all kind of bondages. And I said, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I'm so sorry for playing the God thing. I don't want to live like that anymore. Come into my life. my life. Take control of it. Take charge of it. Please fix me. And you know, in that moment in my life, I felt a change. The circumstances didn't change. The shackles didn't come off in that moment. 
Amen. But something changed in here. I was set free and I was experiencing God's peace in the midst of a terrible storm in my life. My life changed that day because I felt the presence of God. Amen. I felt all the pressures and tensions that I was going through like just explode and, and, and go away. Are you here with me? So as we keep reading here, verse 49 of Mark chapter 10, Jesus stopped and said, call him. Who was he telling to call? Bartimaeus. The man that was yelling, he was shouting. He was saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And when everybody was telling him, be quiet, shut up. He yelled all the louder. Remember, it says, in the beginning, it says, Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd. I don't know about you, but sometimes we can have two or three people here, and they're talking, but they're so loud, you know, it's hard to get a word in. Hello, service is starting, you know. They're talking, sometimes they don't hear, amen. Just imagine this is a big crowd, and this man is sitting by the road on the side. He doesn't just sit there, though, and give up. He cries out louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Amen? Amen. Jesus, it got to, he heard it. I don't know if he had supernatural, superhero ears or what. Jesus, but he heard the cry of the need in the man. And he tells him in verse 51, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And remember, the Bible says that he was sitting, he was a blind Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. Amen. That tells me there was all kind of other needs in his life. Maybe a good, a good hamburger, Jesus, would be good. Maybe a good, you know, bowl of menudo would be good. I'm hungry, I'm begging. Maybe some water because the place was, you know, I don't know. You know that people are like that situation, like homeless. There's a lot of needs in their life. But there was a great need in his life. And he didn't pull no punches on it. Amen. What was the need in his life? I told you the title is The Day My Whole Life Changed. You see, I was blind. Bartimaeus was blind. So he asked him, Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabbi. And that's a very affectionate call. He changed it. Amen? When he says Rabbi, he's saying Master. He's surrendering. Rabbi, I want to see. I don't know if he had ever saw him before. I don't know if he was he could see and then got blind, you know, or got to a coma. I don't know what it was. But he was blind on this day. And the greatest need in his life is he wanted to see. Hello? That's why I ask you today, listen to Jesus as he asked you, what can I do for you? Because what is the greatest need in your life? Is it material things? Is it food? Is it drink? Or is there a specific certain thing in your life that needs to be touched? Hello? I've been doing a, a little study and I was going to show you these things. I got these, I get these little, they're easy readers, little books. This one's on anger. You know, man, you know, I think I got everything under control. But the more I read this, the more I'm getting, finding out, I, I, I'm a, I live a pretty angry life, Alvin. <laughs> you know? And, 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 and I ask, Lord, help me. Amen? Amen? That's where I'm at right now. I might be like Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, you know, sitting there saying, Jesus, help me to deal with my anger inside. Amen? Amen. And sometimes, like I was sharing with Brother Anthony, sometimes we get an anger because we don't see God moving like we would like to see him move. 
or doing or answering prayers like we would like to see them answered. But God can heal that and he can set us free. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I know that he's the one that holds the keys yes. to all the bondages we may find ourselves in. Amen? Amen? But the Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? Amen. So the blind man said, the last part of verse 51, the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. I want to see. And it wasn't like Jesus told him to go and, 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 and say this prayer or that prayer or, you know, go through this ceremonial thing or, or you know, you got you to gotta change your life before, you know. It wasn't. See, his life already showed that he had faith because of who he was approaching. Amen. Amen. I want to see. What's the, what's the need in your life today? Amen. What needs to be touched? Or what does Jesus, you need Jesus to speak the word over today in your life? Amen. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go! Jesus said. Go! Jesus said. Your faith has healed you. Amen. Yes. What you believed. Who you came to. That's all his faith. The blind man. His whole world and life changed that day. Amen. Amen. He said, go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and went back to his old life of begging. Immediately he received his sight and kept his eyes closed because he got used to living blind. Hello? Immediately he received his sight. No, the Bible says Immediately he received his sight. That's a powerful miracle for it to happen right there, right now, right? Amen. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus. Amen. Hello. And followed Jesus along the road. Where was Jesus going? To Calvary. Amen. He was going to the cross. That's where he was leaving Jericho. That's where he was headed to. Amen. But he had time to stop. He had time to hear. Amen. And he touched this man's life in a very powerful way. Amen. His whole world changed. I want to switch over to the, the other version of it. Not version, but the, in the other gospel. In Luke 18.35. This one doesn't actually give his name, but we know it's the same person because of the same incident, amen? In Luke 18, 35, it says, As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. A blind man, he was sitting there, he was begging. But when he heard the crowd, when he heard, see, I wanted you to hear this part. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. He inquired. He couldn't see, but he could hear. How many of you could hear today? Amen. Jesus said in the book of Revelations, if you have ears, listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Amen. Amen. I believe we all have ears here today, right? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Um, listen to what God is speaking to you today. What do you need from Jesus today? Amen. Because what he can give you is worth more than all the, you know, silver and gold in the world. That's right. And another scripture where Peter and John were going to the temple and they saw a crippled man. He was sitting there begging. And he looked at them with expectation. <coughs> hey, they can give me some money. 
they can give me something so I can go give you some bread. <laughs> Amen. But Peter looked straight down at him. Amen. And didn't put him down because he was down. But looked straight down on him and stretched out his hand after he told him, Silver and gold have I not, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he reached out his hand to help him to get up. And the Bible says that his, his legs, you could hear them just coming together and strengthening, and he got up. Amen. And the Bible says for that individual, he started dancing and skipping, all excited. Yeah. Well, you would too when your life changed, right? Yeah. If you were a cripple for all your life and you had to be begging, everything changes, right? Yeah. That's a time of joy, a time of excitement, yeah. amen? And the story of Bartimaeus is that kind of story as well. Hello? Yeah. It says in here that when he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And again, I have to uh, just infer that somehow he heard that Jesus was touching people's lives and things were being changed. Remember, this is the latter part of Jesus' ministry on earth when he's on his way to the cross. All the stories, the feeding of 5,000, the raising of the dead, all those things that had already been like on the news blast in those places. Amen? There was no internet. There was no cell phones. There wasn't all the things we have now that we can get everything like that real fast. But somehow the word of God spread about what Jesus was doing. Amen? amen. And this man, blind Bartimaeus. Amen? You know, he didn't even used to get upset no more because, you know, sometimes, when, you know, when you're living in a situation or, or in some kind of um, way like Bartimaeus, maybe crippled, maybe in prison without walls, sometimes you start to, to um, develop the insensitivity to don't care what they call you no more. You know, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. He started being okay to be called blind Bartimaeus because I'm blind anyway, so what does it matter? Call me blind Bartimaeus. After this day, his name was no longer blind Bartimaeus, but he was Bartimaeus. They could see. Amen? He could see. What's the name that could be on you today? Like me, you know. Are you still angry? Are you still frustrated about certain things? You know, those things we start letting them, because the enemy comes in. And he's the one that likes to keep us blind. The Bible says that he blinds the eyes of the unbelievers. So they will not see the truth in Jesus Christ. And come to him that they may be saved, that they may be healed. Amen? The enemy is Satan, of course. He wants to keep you in that state. You know, wearing the title, I'm blind Bartimaeus. No, you're not. God has healed you. God has saved you. God has delivered you from the old life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It says, when, when he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. Why would he have to ask what was happening, folks? This is church. You can get involved why did he have to ask what was happening? Because he heard all this excitement. You know, the people that were walking with Jesus, they were probably all talking about the miracles Jesus did. They were all excited. They were laughing. Hey, we're going with Jesus. Wouldn't you be happy if you were walking with Jesus? Amen. Hello? Yes. You know, Jesus is here now. The Bible says where two or three come together in his presence that he's here. Amen. Amen. So you can have joy right now in his presence and peace. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the, you know, he was, he asked what was happening because he heard. So they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And when, as soon as he heard Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, he called out, 
Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped, verse 40. Jesus stopped in order the man to be brought to him. And when he came, when he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Receive your sight. That's why I wanted to share this, this portion of the same story, but from the book of Luke, because there's a few more words in there that are powerful. Amen. Receive your sight. Right now, I asked you a little while ago, what do you want Jesus to do for you? Do you have enough faith to receive it right now? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God should give you the confidence that God brought you here for a great purpose. Amen? Amen. Hello? <clears throat> what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Amen. Verse 43 says, immediately he received his sight, and again, Follow Jesus. Amen. Follow Jesus. But in this one it says, follow Jesus, praising God. Amen. Praising God. Amen. It's an exciting thing to walk with the Lord. Amen? Amen. To know that he's taking your hand like that song said. Amen? One touch from him. Hello? Amen. Praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. I always like to stop there and say, when you show the miracles of God that God is doing with you, and you're happy about the presence of the Lord, and you're walking hand in hand with the Lord, or you're getting close to the Lord, you have this excitement that's, that, that's in you, amen? And, and I tell you, you know, that you know, you'll, you'll touch your families with that love of God that's in you. You'll touch your sons, your daughters, your mothers, your fathers, your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, your aunts, your next door neighbor. Hello! Because you share in that. Hello? Not about your nice clothes or maybe your beautifulness or handsomeness. Hello? Or your great charismatic character. Hello? No. About Jesus in your life. Answered prayers that have come true for you. Hello? You guys awake? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's good to stay awake in church. Amen. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about a guy that fell asleep in church. <laughs> it's in the Bible, so I'm not giving you no jive. It's in the Bible. It says the Apostle Paul, he was preaching a sermon. It was at night. And uh, it said that he went a, it was a little lengthy sermon. And this one young man, I believe his name was Uticus or Eutychus or something like that. He was up there sitting on the ledge and he fell asleep during church. He fell asleep and he fell down two stories. It infers that he kind of like died. But the Apostle Paul went down there and prayed for him and he woke up. God's power was there. Amen. Amen. That's just throwing in there so you don't fall asleep here today. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. The real story is, what, does G what do you want Jesus to do for you? Amen? Amen. Amen? All the people praise God. Bartimaeus, he was sightless. He was a pauper. He was a very poor person. That's what pauper means. Amen? A very poor person. He was begging. Begging was his business. He was helpless. He was unpopular. Are you with me? That's just what he was going through. Those are not his feelings. Those are just the real life things that he was going through. He was helpless. How many of you have ever 
turned off the lights in your house and you've seen kind of blindness because you couldn't see anything. Or maybe you've been in a dark place and everything, you couldn't see anything in front of you. I know what it's like to be blind from here. As a young kid, I, I boxed, and that was there was two two times when I was hit here, and my vision went away. I couldn't I couldn't see. It turned everything turned black. This is a true story. But I had enough sense to know where I was at and what I was doing. My consciousness was there. I knew that there was another guy, but he didn't know that I couldn't see because I knew my eyes were open, but I couldn't see. So I, I went against the ropes so I could know that the support of the ropes is where I was at. And he'd come, but he was, I guess, scared to come in and knock me out even though I couldn't see. But it only lasted for uh, a couple of minutes. Not even a minute, I'm sorry, a couple of seconds, a few seconds. But I was really literally blind. Amen. And um, it's not a fun place to be at. This man had lived his whole life, not a few seconds. Amen. Blind, helpless, having to beg, having to ask people for help. But church, God had a plan for him. He didn't even know. Nah. But he had to do his part in the plan. Yeah. Amen. Nah. He couldn't just sit there. Wow, there goes Jesus. I heard about all the mighty miracles he did. Wow, that's good news. Whoa, praise the Lord. Praise God. He couldn't just sit there. He had to pray. And those, those shouts are shouts of prayer. Amen. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And when somebody wants to shut down your prayer life, you got to get up and shout all the louder. Amen. Amen. How many of you have a prayer life? Seriously. Amen. Raise your hand if you got a prayer life. Amen. Amen. Well, that's good. You got you to gotta keep that fired up. Amen. You got to keep it on fire. You got to keep the, the flame going. And that means you got to keep putting the wood on it. Or, or, or however you keep your prayer life going. Amen. Don't wait for the crisis to hit. Don't wait for the hard times to come. When things are good, you pray. When things are sad, you pray. When things are happy, you pray. When you're rejoicing, you pray. When things start to get a little tough, you pray. You shout out, God, I know you're there. And I know you're for me. Amen? Amen. Hello? Praise God. So he was very poor. He was begging. That was his business. He was helpless, unpopular. But there was one thing about him that was so good that was in him. He was uneasy and fearlessly on the alert to a better, to better his condition. Amen? Amen. He didn't want to stay like that. He didn't want to stay blind. Jesus is asking you today what he can do for you. Now you can stay like that or you can let it out today. Amen. You can get out from behind the facade of your own ingenuity or your own wisdom and strength and say, Lord, I surrender to you. Hello? Amen. Also, this blind man, he put away the hindrances which was likely it would delay his going for his cure. Amen. What, what did he do that's in there that I want you to see? It says <clears throat> in verse 49, it says Jesus stopped and said and, call, and called him. So they called the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. And it says in verse 50 that he had to throw his cloak aside and he jumped to his feet to get to Jesus. Amen? How many of you have ever been... I don't even know how to say it. But <laughs> maybe you had the towel wrapped around you or maybe you're... Anyway, 
you've had the blanket wrapped around you and you tried to take off running with the blanket wrapped around you and you, 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 you got, your feet got tangled in the blanket and you fell down all over the place, right? That's a, that would have hit, that's a hindrance, amen? Well, he had a cloak, something like a blanket, amen? But for me, that doesn't mean a cloak. That means that there was something that could prevent him from coming to get what he needed to. The hindrances of sin can do that to us sometimes. The disobedience, the doubting of God, that can be that cloak. I don't really know if God can do this. Yes, he can. Nothing is impossible with God. I don't really know if God wants to do this. He wants to do it. He's willing. Amen? But are you willing to throw off your doubts? Are you willing to throw off your fears? Are you willing to throw off your pride? Amen? And say, God, I'm coming to you. Amen. Hello? Hello? Because that's what it takes sometimes. The biggest one is self. Throw it away. You know? Sometimes it can be old associates or friends. Hello? You know? And then you're running around missing your blessings because you don't want to cut loose sometimes. Sometimes we got to cut loose of people that are still love them. Don't, don't get me wrong. You still love them, but you got to cut loose those. Um, I'm looking for a word here. Maybe my brother Hector can find it for me. <laughs> um, it's that word when people are not cynics, but um, well, anyways, God will bring it to me in a minute. Amen? Praise God. So, he had to throw it off. Amen? <clears throat> There was no end to the needs of Bartimaeus. He wanted food. He was a beggar, right? He wanted friends. He probably needed clothing. He probably needed somewhere to stay, a home. Everything that anybody demands in order to make, you know, things better. Remember, he was like a beggar. He was like a tramp. He was like a vagabond. He was like a hobo. Hello! But still... In that situation where he was at, he came out to save because he knew the need in his life and what he wanted. More than all those other things, he wanted his eyesight. He wanted to see. And he found that out when he went, amen, to just ask, who's coming by here? And then he yells out, Rabboni! There's a con con there is concentrated, he's concentrated in, the just, in just a single word, a whole burst of generous in that one word, Raboni, generous and affectionate feelings. My master, faith, reverence, love, unspeakable, adore, adorning, a, a wonder, amen, is in that one word, Raboni, my master, amen. What does that say? That says that I surrender, I'm surrendering to you, God, amen. That says that, you know, God, you are in control. I'm not in control. Amen. That says, you're my master. You have a plan for me. You'll not leave me here to drown. Hello? How many of you know God wants to save you? God wants a relationship with you. God wants to hold you. God wants to embrace you. Hello? Amen? Praise God. Bartimaeus' cure and his healing was instantaneous, immediately. It was perfect. It was whole. Amen? Amen? It was sovereign. The power of God came and it touched his eyes and he healed them. Amen. Why? Yes. Because he believed that God could heal them. Amen. Amen? That's why Jesus, you don't see Jesus. There's many times Jesus healed blind men. And I could have went through a lot of those different stories of how Jesus healed the blind person. Amen? But I like this one because it says that this person knew that they knew what they wanted from God. And they asked him. 
What was the most important thing? Maybe for you it's a family member. Maybe it's somebody's life that you're, you're hoping that, that, you know, wishing and or that, that they would really give their life to God and surrender. Or maybe that they would be healed from something very complicated. Amen? Yeah. Amen. If you hold on to your faith and don't give up, believe God's going to do something. It's not going to be left unchecked. It's not going to be left undone. The God of all gods, the miracle working God, is with you. Hello? Amen. Is with you. Hallelujah. It was a complete healing. Amen. He was saved. Thy faith has saved thee. Amen. Hallelujah. Why was it he was saved? Because now he would not have to be, you know, like, 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 um, begging. He could start doing something industrious. He could start doing something where he didn't have to beg anymore. Amen. His whole world changed that day. Nothing would ever be the same anymore. Can you say that about your faith in God today? About your faith in your salvation today? About your walk with God today? Or do you always see the old have the old character, the old nature rising up? Where your anger, your unforgiveness rises up, or your doubts start to creep in. Or maybe your love for the things of the world. Hello? What is it? I'll tell you something. Whatever it is, take off that cloak and throw it away. Amen. Amen. So you can get to Jesus where he can touch you. Amen? Amen. Hello? The Bible says that, that he was his, his experience left him full of joy. He was a happy man. Wouldn't you be a happy man if you were flying all of a sudden you could see? I mean, it just makes sense to me, amen? I was blind, but now I can see. How many of you ever heard the song Amazing Grace? It said, I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. Amen? What can you see now? Well, you can see God, and that can help to develop faith in you through life's difficulties and troubles that we have. We're going to go through them, but you know what? God can help us because the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. God wants to be there and help you. And he will be. Amen? Amen. So he was full of joy. A new world had suddenly opened up for him. And he was obedient. He followed Jesus as a disciple. He was grateful. He glorified God. He was zealous. And we may be sure he left not so much as one man in Jericho um, not know that he was blind. But that God had given him eyesight, Amen. given him sight. God had took the blindness away. Hello. Amen. He let off. He probably went around looking for all the blind guys. Say, look, God can heal you. God can let you see. Amen. Hello. Praise God. Hallelujah. So again, I have to ask. What do you want Jesus to do for you today? Amen? And this, this, this whole story goes along with our salvation. Because sightless, sightlessness or blindness is a symbol of sin. Amen? And then sin destroys our whole nature. Awakening of sinners is often due to Christians a commitment from somebody or somebody's faithfulness as a Christian. Amen. In the salvation of his soul, the sinner has work to do. Amen. Amen. We see Bartimaeus. Did he have? Did he do something? Did he do something? He didn't just sit there and expect it to happen. He prayed. And when the door was open for him, what did he say? The greatest need in his life was, I want to see. What is the greatest need in your life today? I know this is a, not a big place, not a lot of people, but you know what? Our God is the same God that visits the big churches, the little churches, amen? amen. And he wants to touch yes. you today. Amen. Hello? Amen. Are you here with me? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Prayer is indispensable in every case. No one can be saved 
who will not ask for God to come into their life. Amen? Amen. And then we have to get rid of all hindrances must be put away. Many a man seemed to start well, but has been tangled in the running by his garments, like, like this brother could have been tangled in. Amen? If he didn't take it off. And sometimes we can get caught in the garments of respectability or maybe fame or fortune or social standing, you know, or literary, literary eminence or pleasant companionship. Amen? Amen? But like the Bible says, in this world, you can attain the whole world. You can be famous. You can have the best of this and the best of that. But is it worth the price <coughs> of losing your soul? Amen? Of losing your soul? How? Well, the Bible says in the story of the parables of the, of the, of the, of the seed, it says there's one of them where you know that the, you know that they're just focused on on on, the, on on things, and that that can that can all of a sudden get a grip on you, hello, Man. and cause you to lose your 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 soul. How? Well, by the anxiety, the stress of getting this or getting that or working sixty hours a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do that. I, but you don't really have to do it, amen? Nah. You gotta stop, and you gotta relax, and you have to experience God's peace again, <coughs> amen? Because this peace that we have here when we come to church is awesome, nah. amen? Any drug addicts, alcoholics used to come to my church over there in Compton and Linwood, and I used to kind of sometimes say, sometimes, you know, because I used to get that thing Man, why you keep coming to church and you're all loaded? You know? And you know what their answer was? And I never bothered them again because I learned God's love through their answer. They said, you know what? I come over here even when I'm loaded. Even when I'm intoxicated, I come because it's the only place I can find peace. See, sometimes we don't know what's going on in those people's lives. What's leading them to drink or use drugs or lifestyles? You know, you know, we don't know, but we were, we we're real quick to to judge them. They have needs too. Amen. They want to be free too. Amen. They're just in bondage, and we sometimes question. Well, you can quit. Yeah, you could, but sometimes it's not that easy. Right. Believe it. Believe me. I needed God to quit all my vices and habits. I needed the power of the Holy Spirit to stay away from them. Hello? Amen. Yeah. And he was there for me. Hello? Amen. You love God today? Amen. Praise God. Jesus is always ready to save anyone who cries to him. Did Bartimaeus cry to him? Amen. Did Bartimaeus cry to him? Amen. Did Bartimaeus cry to him? When everybody told him to shut up or why are you praying to God? Did Bartimaeus keep going? Did he keep yes. seeking? Did yes. he keep knocking? Yes. Did he keep asking? Yes. The Bible says, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and you shall receive. Amen? Because yeah. right. the Bible says that God can open doors for you that no man can shut. Amen? Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you got to accept Christ and, and and all that he stands for. Amen? The sinner must say, like Bartimaeus, he called him Rabboni. But those that want Jesus to really come into their life, Lord Jesus of Nazareth, Son of David, and Rabboni, those things show that you're surrendering all. Amen? Amen. Just by your saying that. Amen? How do we get God's blessings? Cry out loud and pray. Fast and pray. Amen. Amen. How does God change a life? By people fasting and praying. How does God touch a person's life? You know, brothers and sisters, things don't know what's happening in our timetable or our time chart. Amen. I've heard, you know, lots of testimonies of mothers or fathers 
said my, 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 my daughter or my wife or they, they just they just wouldn't change they just kept you know going on that way and I just kept praying for them I just kept praying for them suddenly all of a sudden some of them 10 years took 10 years of praying this one is very challenging some of them took 20 years of praying but it finally happened Amen. what's important that it does happen amen? amen hello that people's lives are touched by the power of God amen, amen. so keep crying aloud amen be earnest you know seek it with perseverance I'm gonna pray I'm gonna trust God amen, amen. and cast off <coughs> cast off encumbrances cast off those things that will stop you and that will hinder your blessings from coming forward. Amen? Hello? Amen. You know, the one of the things that I like in this story is that he sought God in a time in his life of discouragement. He did. When things were kind of crazy, he was discouraged. I mean, Living like that, I don't know how old he was, it doesn't tell us, but living like that, even for a day, hello, would cause me to be discouraged. Hello? Yeah. Just imagine, every day he has to be put there to beg. You can see his, his lifestyle had developed into that lifestyle, that he had to be begging, that he had to be this, he had to be that, he had to be set there, he had to be guided around. Hello, but no longer because his whole life changed that day. Nobody was going to have to take him by the hand anymore. Yeah. Hello. You come to church now because you want to come to church, right? Yeah. Nobody has to force you or call you yeah. and say, you need to go to church. Yeah. No, because you come because you love God. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Do you love him today? Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. He came under discouragement, but he received what? He received encouragement. Amen? Amen? How are you doing? So today we may have come because something's going on, like I said, and you gotta answer that question. You know. Jesus is asking you today. Bar the question to Bartimaeus was not a single question just for the that one man. It's for the whole world. What do you want him to do for you? What is the need in your life? Amen? Praise God. The encouragement, it didn't content him. He wasn't satisfied with the encouragement because he still sought Jesus. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. He sought Jesus to heal him. Amen? He arose from where he was at. Hopefully, resolutely, he quit it. His begging posture, he got away from his begging way in order to the salvation uh, would come to his life. Amen? Amen? He cast away the garments and hindrances. He came to Jesus. He stated his case to God. Amen? He received salvation. Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole. And he obtained perfect eyesight. Amen? Perfect eyesight. 2020, I believe. Amen? Complete hell. Hallelujah. Yes. Having found Jesus. And Jesus healed them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. And let's pray on that question. Jesus is asking you, and hear the Holy Spirit, what do you want him to do for you today? Nobody's going to have you come up here to the altar or just right there where you're at. Amen. Whatever that need is today, or whatever you want God to do in your life, and I don't want to dictate everything to you because we're all different. There's different needs in our life, and there's things that are important, you know. No matter how much even your own mind or your own thoughts tell you to be quiet, God can't do it. Don't believe yourself even if it's telling you that because nothing is impossible with God. Lord Jesus, I just pray, Lord God, over each and every person here today, Lord. Lord, I represent you here, Lord God. You know, teaching and taking care of your flock, Lord God. Feeding your sheep, Father God. And, 
and, and, and, and feeding your lambs, Lord God, and taking care of them, Lord God. But right now, Lord God, today your flock needs to be touched, Lord God, by you. The great shepherd, the great shepherd. Yes, Lord Jesus, touch them right now where they're at, Lord God. Touch them in, the, in your powerful name, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Let them know and let them walk away from service today, Father God, knowing that their faith, their love for you, and their trust in you is bringing forth or has brought forth whatever they're seeking you for today, Father God. It will not go or be left undone, Lord God, because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are powerful, Lord. So we pray in the mighty name of Jesus for you to touch every person that's here or that will hear my voice in a later time, Lord. Touch them, heal them, deliver them, set them free, provide, Lord God, that that they need today in their lives, Father God, in the mighty name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Do you believe that, church? Amen. Do you receive it? Amen. Bartimaeus received his miracle. Amen. Receive your miracle today in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a praise offering.